Hello and welcome back to another episode from Driving Britain. Today's episode is going to be about time, and more specifically, not being able to tell the time. For those of you who watch the Driving Britain channel regularly, you will know that we've put out a few videos lately called Gen Z Can't Answer Simple Questions. If you're not familiar with those types of videos, they're basically people are going out onto college and university campuses and asking people coming past, so they're usually teenagers, maybe early 20s for some people, and asking them pretty simple questions. Things like how many days are in a week, how many days are in a year, three times three times three. Pretty straightforward sort of questions that you would expect them to know the answers to, but it turns out that most of them just, well, they don't. They get pretty much everything wrong in a pretty catastrophic sort of way, which is why we watch the videos, because they're really funny. So if you haven't seen any of those, then after you finish watching this video, you should perhaps check them out. But before that, one question that kept on coming up time and time again that Americans really, really struggled with, especially young Americans, is time. They just can't tell the time. Or especially can't tell the time using an analog clock. Now the analog clocks are the large round things on the lower portion of the screen. This big thing here and here, with this obviously being a digital clock. Now, I don't just mean that they, they couldn't tell the time using an analog clock or watch, because that's that's a reasonably common thing nowadays, especially with younger people. What I mean is that they couldn't tell you how many minutes are in an hour. They don't know how many minutes are in half an hour or in 15 minutes. I mean, in a quarter of an hour. If you ask them how many minutes are in a quarter of an hour, they have no idea. They'll just say random numbers. And the same if you ask them how many minutes are in half an hour or three quarters of an hour. They, they just, they can't even conceive or understand the question because it's just meaningless to them. They just don't know how many minutes are in an hour, especially not in portions of an hour. And I found this really, really baffling. And I know that, judging by the comment section at least, so did everybody else. It seemed really bizarre that, you know, at, a group which you would expect to be at least reasonably educated because they're walking around college and university campus and stuff like that. You assume that they're probably studying there rather than just visiting. At least some of them must have been studying there. So you'd think they'd be giving better answers to a lot of the questions, but they, they just weren't. But the time one, that, that really did stand out. Yeah, I couldn't understand why. But then I came across a video and I started to uncover a theme that I think might explain it. And it's not what you're thinking. All of the reasons why you think that Americans can't tell time and don't know how many minutes are in an hour, it's, it's just not what you're expecting. It certainly wasn't what I was expecting. But to explain how some people see time, I don't mean in a philosophical sort of way and I'm, I'm not getting into a physics debate with it. I mean literally, physically see time when you look at a clock. That's what's different. Now, the guy that we're about to look at, he sees himself as unusual as far as Americans go because he finds it easier to tell time using an analog clock versus the digital clock, which is opposite to quite a lot of Americans. And I thought, well, yeah, that seems pretty normal. But then when he explained why he sees it different and why he thinks that it's easier for him personally to see or to understand time using the analog clocks, that's what started to give a little indication to what might actually be going on here. So let's get into the video. He you know, he might start talking about how he perceives time and stuff. He's not going to go on a physics tangent or anything like that. He does bring it back to what you expect him to talk about. So even if it looks like he's going to go off somewhere else, stick with it. It's only a short video anyway. Hello and welcome back to the year-end Connextra's Veganza. I have for you a very weird video, which is going to be a kind of test to see how this might go as a main channel video topic. So I have in front of me three clocks. One is digital, two are analog, and they are slightly different themselves. They all show the same time though. And it has only recently occurred to me that this to me is harder to parse. And I can hear a bunch of you people out there that are just astonished by that fact. And honestly, I was too, until I thought about this a little bit more completely. And this all started thanks to the fact that in the video on photographic printing, I set this clock to 420 because I'm a child. And a lot of people didn't catch it because 
a lot of people can't read analog clocks these days. Now, don't make fun of them. That's not what I'm trying to do here. Not at all. But in trying to work out why that is, I we seem to be on our way to some sort of wild difference in how we, as individuals, conceptualize time. This number, 337, I understand that that is 37 minutes past the hour, but I do not have any sort of internal conception of what 37 minutes past the hour really means. To me, this reads as like a fact. It is 37 minutes past the hour, which is, you know, I am able to go and process that in my head and realize that, yes, there are 23 minutes until four o'clock or 22 if it's going to flip soon, uh, whatever. But on this clock, I can just look at it and tell what time it is. And I don't have to process this into the time 337, 38. And so I've recorded this out of order how I wanted to say things. So yay me. And you're going to see the continuity move all over the place because, you know, there's three clocks in front of me. But this is the thing that if you haven't realized yet, I'm sorry that nobody's explained it to you. And if you have realized it, good for you. you you're probably nine tenths of the way there to realizing why this is valuable to me. The minute hand is exactly the same as a progress bar. It's a visual indicator of how far you are within the hour. That is why this display has more literal meaning to me of the time than this does. I know that 47 is 47 minutes past the hour because obviously, but I don't have that um, going in my head and saying that's 13 minutes to the next hour really doesn't mean anything to me. Like I obviously know that there's 13 minutes. I can make that a quantifiable statistic, but that doesn't mean anything to me other than knowing that that's 13 minutes. This, on the other hand, I can see how close we are to the next hour. And that is valuable to me in a way that digital clocks are not. This actually requires more work for me to contextualize distances from one time to another than an analog clock. And connected to that, um, uh, what was I just saying, progress bar analogy, a thing that really clicked for me when I was writing this script and it's in there and who knows if this will get revised. When I was in high school, our classes started and ended at really weird times. And um, I think the example I gave, which is probably not even right, but say a class went from 9.15 to 10.09, right? So that's 54 minutes. And no, no, that wasn't what I said. I said 9.15 to 10.11 because the classes were 56 minutes, I think. In any case, 9.15 to 10.11, right? I need to do arithmetic in my head to know how many minutes that is. And if I want to work out how many minutes we are into the class, I need to do that arithmetic again. It's not difficult. I know that. But see, with, a, with an analog clock, and this is literally how I process the passage of time in my classes, I would be able to look at the clock see where the minute hand will be when the class is over and then track the process, the progress to that point. Well, so there's two parts to what he's just been saying. The first is looking back to the beginning part where he's talking about the digital clock. He's saying that, you know, he can interpret the minutes as a factual thing. Like, you know, now on the screen it says 49 minutes. So he can understand that. He knows what portion of time is left before the next hour. He can yeah, physically work it out as in a sum, but it doesn't really compute as a portion of time. And that's why he's saying that he kind of, yeah, not really struggles with a digital clock, but why he thinks that it's perhaps at a glimpse more work. That's why when people were being asked how many minutes were in a quarter of an hour, they, they just hadn't really got undone before it. They know what a clock says when it says that it's 15 minutes past the hour. And they can kind of mathematically work out that that means that there's 45 minutes left or that 15 minutes have gone and so on. But it doesn't actually really mean anything to them. If you have an apple pie and you eat half of it, 
you know that half of it's gone. But telling the person that 50% of it's gone, that's the part that's not really computing with them. But if they look at the apple pie and they see that 50% has gone, then it actually means something to them in a way on how they can kind of, you know, numerically pass it on. So when you're asking a person, young American, who's thinking like what this guy is saying, you ask them how many minutes are in half an hour, it's, it's just meaningless to them. If you say how many minutes are left, if it says half past, 30 minutes past the hour, how many minutes are left, then they could, well, maybe not the ones on the Gem Z videos, but most Americans will be able to tell you that there's 30 minutes remaining because they can work it out mathematically. But they don't have real concepts of how much time that really is, if that makes sense. But now that leads us to the analog clock and that's where things should hopefully become a bit clearer. He is literally using it as, like I said, a progress bar. He's not using it with numbers. Now, if I look at a clock, the one that, that's on the left square, well, both of these two analog clocks, I wouldn't see that as, you know, 11 minutes to or anything like that. I'll just look at that and think it says about 10 to, about 10 to 4. I wouldn't look specifically for how many minutes. I just kind of round it up or down depending on which, which main number it was by. So, you know, it was near quarter to originally, so I would have just... You know, group that as about quarter to or about ten to unless you really need to, to know the specific minute but now he's not he's looking at it say if it was ten to he's looking at it and he can see that most of it's gone and he's just got that small portion left until the end of his class or whatever example you're using so by his analog clock if his lesson started at 12 midday he would watch the minute hand run round and when it was halfway round he knew that half of the lesson was gone but not because it said that 30 minutes had gone but because half of the timer had gone it's only the same as if you're looking at an egg timer you don't get any numeric values to it you just see the amount that's moving from one place to another and that's exactly how he's interpreting time when he's looking at a clock when Americans are looking at the digital, or the Americans from the videos that we saw, when they're, and it's not just Americans, I'm sure that it's, you know, people across the board, it's just the ones that we've recently seen were American, kind of, you know, teenagers, I guess. So that's what we're going to talk about because they're kind of freshest in the memory from the videos that we've seen more recently. When we're asking them about digital time, they're, they're values that mean nothing to them. To say a quarter of an hour or half an hour, it's just meaningless. You might as well be asking them how many apples have we gone through since three o'clock. You know, it just means nothing to them. If you ask them, I'm not on about the ones in the Gen Z videos where they can't spell their own name on them, but I'm talking about the average person in this sort of thinking at least. If you say to them, it's half past now, that means it's 30 minutes gone, how many minutes are left until the hour, then they'll be able to mathematically tell you how many minutes have gone, how many minutes are left until the next hour comes around. But that's not really how they're generally seeing time, is it? They're, they're looking at it like an egg timer. Because in schools, almost every school will have an analog clock in pretty much every single classroom, lecture room, whatever you want to call them. They very rarely, if ever, have digital clocks. It's always analog clocks, which is a bit surprising since most young apparently can't read analog clocks anymore. But they don't need to because they're looking at it like an egg timer, an amount. Now, when I look at that clock, say the one that says 10 to 4, now, I automatically look at the, the minute hand first, see how close it is to the hour, and then look across the hour hand to see what hour we're coming up to or just gone past. I'm thinking about it in numeric values. I'm thinking that there's almost 50 minutes gone, or that there's about 10 minutes left until the next hour. But where you or I or the average person might think, oh, there's about 10 minutes left until the next hour, he's not, he's thinking, I've got this amount of sand left to run through the timer, until we're on the next hour, if that makes sense. Probably, probably as long as I can remember, because I know I've been doing this. I know watching the clock even in elementary school when we got out at three, watching the, t the hand get closer to the top of the clock. That is how time functions in my head. These numbers are an abstraction of that movement. And I totally get how that will feel super backwards to a lot of people out there. You see, that's why when the people in the Gen Z videos were being asked about time and they were trying to refer to time, they were trying to explain or give answers based on their knowledge of a digital clock. But because the time, like you said, is a bit arbitrary to them, it doesn't really mean anything to them. It's just, just numbers near enough. They're not seeing it in, you know, like an egg timer's run halfway through. 
then that's why they couldn't answer the questions. Now this guy, he, yeah, he's a very smart guy. He's, you should look at his channel. He's got some fantastic videos and he's a very, very smart guy. Now I think that he seems to have almost adapted past this. For whatever reason, his brain seems to have recognized that, that he's not really kind of getting what he needs out of the digital clock. He's not reading it in the same way as what perhaps most of the countries seem to. I'm not sure, maybe they don't, maybe it's just the UK, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. You'll have to put into the comment section on your thoughts on this. But he's he seems to have realised that it just wasn't quite working. And somewhere along the line, even from an early age, he adapted a new system to try to actually quantify time. Now for me and for most people in the UK, we look at the numbers and we actually assign a proper value to them. Like we know there's about, if I look at a clock and it says 10 to the hour, then I know that there's 10 minutes left and I know I've got a grasp of how long 10 minutes is going to be or how long half an hour is, or an hour is. I don't need any actual kind of physical representation, egg timer or half an apple pie or anything like that to be able to conceive that or mentally picture that. I just kind of somehow innately know because of learning it, I guess, somewhere along the line as a part of our upbringing. But that hasn't happened here. And that seems to be why he has adapted from progressing out of the digital clock to finding his own way to be able to interpret the analog clock which most of the people ask, answering the questions on the Gen Z videos they weren't they're, they're basically stuck halfway between the two but if you have only ever been looking at analog clocks as a means to show this but like old-fashionedly and haven't ever connected or analyzed or uh, in, in other ways processed the value of the hand's movement. I, what does that say? I mean, like, it's got to say something. You know, they talk about, like, people aren't really visual learners, but, like, well, that... Uh, I've, I've been telling time visually this entire time, and until... I, uh, until I stopped having clocks like these around the house, I never really thought of that. It was just... When you're learning to tell the time, in the UK at least, then would be given you know, a picture of a clock, basic sort of stuff, and kind of encouraged to learn the numbers going around the clock. First you learn the, the hour hands, so you work out what hour you're going to be on, and then you kind of do your five times table, working out how far around it's going to be and it's part of your very early stage learning on counting around to 15 minutes or counting around to 30 minutes 45 minutes it's part of the the abc type learning that that we do in infant school just the same as you start to do the cat and hat type learning words that's where we'll be introduced to an analog clock and how to read the numbers on the analog clock how to interpret time from the from an analog clock and i don't think that that's what they're being exposed to but because we're kind of we're taught the numeric value of the numbers and then tell the time based on that numeric value rather than looking at a clock and then trying to work it out using maths to work it out we're kind of starting with maths and then applying it to the picture whereas they're kind of almost starting with the picture and then trying to apply maths I know I'm not explaining that very well but that's because I'm not really sure how to describe it <laughs> but I think that that seems to be what is going on the case that this is um, this is how I see time moving. This this I I can see it counting the numbers up, but that doesn't mean anything to me. Without actually thinking through, you know, what does five zero mean? And yes, you know, 50, 50 sixtieths. You can make a fraction out of that. You know that it's ten groups of five. However you want to do it, th there's so many easy ways to do it, and I recognize that that's not difficult, but. I don't have the indication from this thing of the literal indication of closeness to the next hour. And without it, time just makes less sense to me. It, it's always going to be more of a uh, processing task. It's going to take more cognitive work for me to look at a clock like, like this. Like even say, say I have to go somewhere at 415, right? I have to think that okay, so there's 10 minutes to four and then 15 minutes to four, so 25 minutes. And every single time I'm gonna look at this clock and figure out how much time I have left, I need to do that same comparison. Whereas with an analog clock, I will literally put an imaginary target at 15 
and just see how close is the minute hand to that. And I'll be able to see fractionally how much time. You see, he's almost joining an actual numeric timer to an egg timer near enough, isn't he? Because the egg timer part of it is he's just looking at how much space there is between where the hand is now and where the finish line of the hand is and he's got to go and do something. But he knows that he needs to try and quantify that more than just how much sand's kind of passed through the timer. And so he is applying the numbers to it, but more as a kind of fractional sort of idea where he's just kind of almost trying to chop the pie up in his mind himself. But he's, he's basically looking at it as a shrinking picture. And when there's no picture left, when all the sounds run through, then that's fine. He knows he's, he's at the end of the lesson or it's time for the appointment or, or whatever comes up. But I think that the other thing that might be playing a part might be how we actually go to school or what it, there is at school. Because I was just thinking that in infant school, one of the reasons and one of the ways that we learn about small portions of time, like 10 minutes or 15 minutes, are school playtime. Your morning break, I think you used to get about 15 minutes for the morning break. Then there's, I think, about an hour for lunch and then 20 minutes for the evening playtime or perhaps the other way around. Some are like them sort of portions anyway. But it meant that you kind of, you got a grasp of how much time was passing from a really early age because you was working with those units already. So maybe that's one of the reasons why we start to put a bit more weight on just understanding the numbers of a clock and what each portion kind of means and then applying time to it rather than looking at the, the picture of a clock and then trying to mathematically work out what it's saying. I'm, I'm not sure. There's people from all different countries that watch these videos. So I want you to put into the comment section how you're kind of introduced to clocks and time and spaces of time like 15 minutes or 30 minutes. How do you interpret them? And how did you actually kind of get taught them? How do you think that most people seem to have an innate kind of idea of how, when half an hour passes or an hour passes? Think back or try to work out where you think that you kind of gained that, that ability from. Because I think that that's probably at the crux of where all this has kind of progressed from. Time of the hour remains and I do have an innate sense of what, how long that's going to take for the minute hand to move. Wild stuff, right? I am able to ascertain an awareness of the time just glancing at an analog clock. And the reason why, and this is this is something that like, to me seems like everybody should have picked up on, but it has been it has become apparent that this is not the case. The clock represents the hour as a circle, and the minute hand is pointing to where you are on the circle. But see, I think that's a conception that people fixate on and then get stuck. I know this video is all over the place, but here's what I, here's what I mean by that. I am not looking at this clock to read it literally, as in to decipher what this clock says. And I mean decipher as in literally take the glyphs of the clock and turn that into words. That's not what I'm doing when I read a clock like this. I just look at it and I know. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I was saying earlier. We do exactly that. We're in the UK. That's exactly how we kind of talk. We look at the glyphs. We look at the numbers We and we take them as the symbol. We're not looking at the spaces. We're not looking at the position of the hands as in how far round the dial they are. Obviously we are, but I mean as in how much sand has run through an egg timer sort of sense. We're not, we're not looking at it like that. We're looking at it as actual symbols. Based on where the minute hand is, not what it is pointing to, but where the minute hand is, what time it is. And when I have explained this to people, they're, I mean, I can't really judge their responses because this has all just been textual communication over Twitter, but there's a lot of people who are just like unable to grok that. I have, but I can't explain it in any other way. That's the, that's what's wild. There is this weird blind spot that I have regarding digital time that other people have regarding analog time. And it's fascinating. Yeah, but that's the thing though, isn't it? He thinks that he's the only one that has that problem with digital time, but we know from those videos, and altogether, 
we've only put out probably half a dozen Gen Z type videos, but all together through the different research and working out which videos we were going to use and that sort of stuff, I must have seen, personally seen, at least 50 people of all ages and all kind of demographics, some 50, 60 year old adults in suits and stuff like that, down to teenage kids on the beach in the bikinis or in the shorts with a surfboard by the side of them. A whole range of people and all different areas with the same time question and they they had the exact same problem as him the numbers on the clock on a digital clock they can calculate what they mean they can say how many minutes are mathematically passed and left to the next hour but they're meaningless to them they can't quantify them as any actual physical thing on an analog clock when the dials halfway around the minute numbers on the six then you can see that half the amount of time's gone until the next hour which is what he's doing, he's literally using it as an egg timer. An egg timer with numbers so that if he needs to be a bit more precise, he can be. But generally, he just looks and if it's about halfway round, it's about half past the hour. If it's about three quarters of the way round, it's about three quarters of the way through the hour. And that's pretty much what we do. It's just that we kind of do it following the numbers and then the picture rather than the picture and ignoring the numbers, if that makes sense. But he seems to think that he's the only one in America that's having trouble with the digital one but he's not he's very standard from a lot of people in America the thing that does set him apart is he's kind of mentally accepted that it's it's a problem and that's why he's adapted his new system to be able to use analog clocks as an egg timer he doesn't read them in the same sort of way as what most people in the UK at least would read them yeah I'm, I keep coming back to the UK because it's where I am I can give it as a reference point I can't speak for other countries even though I assume that it's probably pretty similar especially across Europe but he's he's literally having to treat it as an egg timer rather than understanding what the numbers kind of yeah he knows what the numbers mean but he's not reading the numbers to tell the time he's just looking at the portion of time that's passed how much space has gone before or after the minute hand the fact that four zero I know that is two-thirds the way through the hour this clock just plainly shows that the hand is two-thirds away around the circle. So that's why when I look at this clock, I'm not translating 240. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just looking at it and saying, oh yeah, we're two-thirds of the way around the circle. And nobody else, or I don't think anybody in Europe at least, would see it like that. You would see it as that it's, it's 340. You might then go on to have an extended thought to think that means that we're three-quarters of the way through the period of time through the hour or almost three quarters of the way that would be a second idea but now I'm also wondering if the fact that they're using imperial is coming into it because he's saying three parts of an hour and six tenths and things like that imperial sort of measurements and references so maybe he's trying to split the clock up into imperial chunks to mentally kind of picture where the time is whereas if you're using a metric system perhaps things seem a little bit more straightforward maybe it is partly down to the metric system maybe that's one of the the factors that's also playing a part because we don't see things in terms of you know six tenths and things like that but i don't even i don't even put that two words in my head i just know that's the time oh, wow see this is why i'm doing this on connextras because um what is this what is this? I don't even know. This is a wild, wild concept that, how do we explore? I mean, this, this is not something that, we need like a scientific study or psychologists or something on this because oh, well, you in look, it right? is just so eye-opening to me that the way that I process time is not through the written time or the spoken time. This this display to me, yes, I can read it, obviously, but the words or the numbers 341 do not have the intrinsic meaning to me that an analog clock does. And for the people that are unable to read analog clocks or find it difficult, the question that I keep coming back to is, are you, like, if, if you think about time as numbers, then I can totally see how this, uh, this feels just really asinine. Like, why would we 
point, why would we use a little hand to point to the numbers when we have technologies that just display the number? And yeah, great point. But if that's the only way you're thinking about time, if you've never considered, <laughs> come on, stay up. It's literally held up by a knife because it's weighted wrong. Oh, and by the way, uh, I am very sorry that this says the Westminster Clock Company in London. That's terrible. I didn't do it. No, it's not terrible. It's a very good thing. And it's just because you knew that I would at some point end up reviewing your video and you thought it would be a nice nod in our direction. We are, after all, called Driving Britain. So thank you for that clock. We appreciate it. <laughs> I do not condone that. Yes, um, he does. But anyway, if... If you are imagining a clock as an indicator of the numbers, like if you process time as numbers first, I can understand how this is, this seems like a really roundabout way to show that time, but I'm not processing it as numbers and I don't know how to, <laughs> like, how can I share that experience with someone? I mean, you can't. You can't get inside my brain. I can't get inside your brain. But what I want to, um, what I want to at least explain to people who may not have realized this is that the graphical, in, the graphical representation of time on a clock, and yeah, I know if you use 24 hour clocks, 12 hour clocks are probably just their own kind of annoying, but the, the, um, the way they display time is in what it looks like, not what it actually, it's so, it's hard to explain. It's not like a, it's not like a speedometer where there could be an arbitrary scale and where the dial is pointing is you then guesstimate what number it actually means. I, I can understand how to some people, like if you're driving a car, you would rather just have the number in front of you. But there's also people who would rather have an analog speedometer because they feel they get a sense of um, change in time. And also like uh, glass cockpits on planes, they always emulate analog instrumentation because you can see the change in time rather than just the discrete value. But um, the thing about clocks specifically is that they always look like this. Aside from weird novelty clocks or the rare 24-hour analog clock, the hands are always going to do the same thing. They're always going to be in the same positions to indicate the same time. And the, the thing that is... Uh, that I can't explain because it's just a thing that I'm so attuned to is that that is what matters. It's not the relationship of the hands to the numbers, although like that helps you understand it, but it's just where is the hand? That's all I need to see. And uh, also some people will, f I've saw a lot of complaints about like the- Yeah, and to some extent that's, that's pretty much how people would tell analog time anyway. Yeah, you wouldn't look at the specific minute. You would look generally how close it was to the next number and then you'd round it to that like 22 or quarter to you wouldn't really go down to the minute on the digital clock even then you know i'd say oh it's coming up it's just gone 22. i wouldn't i wouldn't narrow it down to the exact minute unless there's a reason to but at the beginning still we were kind of almost approaching clocks analog clocks from opposite directions we're following the time the numbers first and then putting it out as you know, what amount of time has come or gone, whereas he's just looking at the amount of space. We're taking numbers, not in a math sense, but as in time, and he's taking an egg timer, and then if he has to be more precise, then he's applying maths to it. Yeah, you do count the minutes round, you can man manually count the minutes round when you're first learning to tell the time, until you know what's half past or quarter past and so on, you might physically need to count the numbers. I don't mean each individual minute, I mean, you know, doing your five times table or something but other than that once you're kind of past that very early stage then you would automatically just know what the numbers represented and so you would just interpret the time straight away so we are using the symbols to tell the time whereas he's using the gap and then applying the numeric value of the symbols afterwards as a maths problem 
if he has to, which is you know quite a long way around, which is why he wouldn't normally do that. Our hand is hard to use. Um, yes, I can understand how it's it's difficult that the hour hand is moving continuously, so it only points at the hour, on the hour, and then you know at 3:30 it's halfway between 3 and 4 and right now it's closer to 4 than 3 yeah but that's the reason why you tend to look at the minute hand first just generally you're not really you know, looking for how many minutes you're just kind of scanning which half of the clock it's on pretty much and you can see that it's quarter to something it's past the the halfway mark you know, you're all the way up to quarter to so that you you know that you're approaching the next hour yeah the little hand the hour hand is close to the number four so you can't really tell whether it's before or after it but the fact that the minute hand is on the way up to the 12 and not on the way from the 12 you know it's on the left hand side of the clock rather than the right hand side of the clock you automatically know on whether it's coming up to the hour or just gone from the hour it doesn't tend to or at least for me and i think that most people in the uk at least it doesn't tend to have to be something that you actually think about it's just something where you instantly interpret it just the same as you know, a car in front of you turns left you don't physically think to yourself oh that car's turning left you just kind of process it in your brain in the back of your brain your brain does the work for you without having to consciously interrupt your normal trail of thought but i can't you know the problem is i i can tell you why that's not a problem to me i imagine that entire pie slice as belonging to the previous hour so it has never been an issue to me that the hour hand is close to four when it's still three o'clock or within the three o'clock hour um so i don't know if that helps anybody but the other thing is like i generally just have an awareness of the hour and maybe that's maybe that's something to do with the fact that I prefer analog clocks because I see the minute hand going around and I know that oh an hour has passed without thinking about it. I don't know, but that whole the difficulty with um reading the hour hand is a little weird to me. Yeah, even here he's still saying yeah, he's almost discounting the hour hand completely. He's literally treating each hour of a clock as an independent entity, almost like as if it's a one hour clock. And when he needs to know more precisely what hour of the day it is, then he is making kind of extra effort to look at the hour hand to see what portion of the clock it's pointing at. But at the same time, I think he's also saying that he kind of innately just understands that when it's coming up to the four and he's got less than half of the timer left to go, then he knows that it's probably on the way into the four or up to the four rather than coming from the four which essentially i guess comes down to pretty much the same way as what what everybody does it you know you innately just kind of accept that it's on the way to the four when the the minute hands on the left hand side of the clock versus the right hand side of the clock meaning that it's just gone 12 and it's going up towards the half past me because i don't find it difficult but also i generally know what hour it is um maybe that's unique i I can't explain that, but uh, and when I say I know what hour it is, I've also said I'm losing track of time. What I mean is that like <laughs> support. It, it is it is rare for me to have not looked at a clock for so long to have lost track of the hour. Uh, thing time just kind of creeps up on me. So oh, I think I regularly do that. <laughs> really rambly discussion. If it makes any sense to you at all, might turn into a full-on video topic, but. Okay, I think he's pretty much at the end of his actual video there. Now we've come across some quite interesting things and I'm not sure that it goes all the way to explaining what's going on but I think that we've hit upon a few things that does indicate what might be going on. The digital clocks, a lot of young Americans especially but maybe Americans overall but young Americans for sure don't understand how many minutes are in an hour or how many minutes are half an hour or a quarter of an hour because they're not looking at time in the same sort of way i guess what they're doing is just seeing it as a numeric value so they they know that 30 minutes have gone and so they know mathematically that there must be 30 minutes remaining until the next hour whereas we kind of mentally chop up the the board into into quarters don't we to some extent quarter past half past and quarter two but they're just arbitrary numbers to most americans or the ones from the videos that we saw at least they don't they don't really have a meaning they don't they, they're not mentally assigning them to an actual portion 
it's just a number, it could be algebra, it wouldn't make any difference. Whereas this guy here, he's expanded himself from everybody around him, not being able to kind of attribute anything specific to the numbers. Whereas this guy, he's he's not been happy with the idea that the, the numbers are kind of arbitrary, they, they're meaningless. He can do a math, mathematical kind of calculation on how many minutes have gone and how many minutes are left in the hour and that sort of stuff, but they don't really mean anything to him. And that's why he's expanded himself out to be able to then use an analog clock, but not in the way that you would normally be taught to use an analog clock. He is literally just using it as an egg timer. It really doesn't matter what the numbers say, it could be a completely blank screen. He's just looking at how far that minute hand is around the clock. And then kind of guesstimating how much time has gone or how much time he's got left. And like you said, you know, when his, his lectures were starting at 10 past the hour or finishing at 10 past the hour, he would just kind of mentally adjust the kind of the scale of the clock so that that was the equivalent of the 12 o'clock year. He just kind of rotated it around in his mind a little bit so that the, the 12 o'clock or the finish line was kind of where the 2 o'clock should be. Not because it was the, the 2 o'clock signifying 10 minutes past, but because that was the time when the lecture finished. That was the end of the egg timer. Treating it almost quite literally as just a blank a blank screen. Most people look at the, or in the UK at least, look at a clock and we interpret the numbers and then deduce the time from those numbers. I don't mean manually count round the board Look, if you're doing a mathematical sum, I mean just kind of almost innately wheel off the numbers from it because it's something that we learn quite early on. But that just hasn't happened with a lot of people in America. I had both digital, well I had a digital watch when I was growing up, but with a lot of the clocks in the house were analogue. So I had both, as well as an alarm clock which was also digital. And I regularly interchanged telling the time between the two without any thought about the fact that they were in some way different but all the same when I was at school and we had break time I would still know how much time would be 10 minutes and I was using a digital clock but maybe that's because I'd already learned the space of time using an analog clock maybe or maybe it's because break time was 10 minutes or 15 minutes or these these set chunks of time and maybe that's how we we kind of learn to attribute time to what Americans see as just arbitrary numbers with a digital clock. Let us know what your thoughts are in the comment section and let us know how you tell time if you've had any problems between analog and digital clocks, which one you prefer and why, and how you was taught to tell the time. Because I think that how we're taught to understand the numbers and time on an analog clock, I think that that's the very reason why Americans can't read the analog clock and can't understand the portions of time in it and that's why the portions of time like half an hour quarter of an hour I think that that's why they're meaningless to them because they've, they've never even learnt it in the first place but let me know your thoughts and your experiences and also what country you're in because if you're a country that uses imperial measurements maybe that's going to have a bearing on it okay I know it's turned out to be a fairly long video for what was originally a fairly short video but thank you for sticking with us and I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and click subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.